Ladies and gentlemen, from the class of the Hall of Fame 2019, Mike Mussina. First, I want to thank everyone for putting the best videos together that they had of me. That was really great. And Joe, that's the best monotone I've got, okay? I'm sorry. First, I want to welcome everyone to Cooperstown. Whether this is your first trip or you've been here many times before, we all appreciate your love of baseball and your efforts to be here. I have a special welcome for all the Orioles fans, all the Yankee fans, and to all the Central Pennsylvania people who drove up here for today's ceremony. I'm standing up here with the best who ever played the game. Some are my former teammates, some are former opponents, and some I grew up watching on television. So the obvious questions are, what am I doing up here? And how in the world did this happen? First to the voters, an enormous thank you to those who voted for me in my very first year and kept me on the ballot. I thank you to those who continue to reevaluate my career and ultimately felt that I deserve this honor. I wholeheartedly thank you to Jane, Jeff, Shesta, Whitney, and the entire staff. Thank you for all you do to make Cooperstown what it is, the home of the great game of baseball. Now, I'm sure that every year the inductees take advantage of this one chance to stand up here and tell great stories about their lives, their challenges, their successes, and their failures. So in about a million words or less, I want to give you a few of my stories. My baseball journey began in the backyards of our neighborhood, back in my hometown of Montoursville, Pennsylvania. Montoursville is located right next to Williamsport, the home of Little League Baseball. And both are connected to Cooperstown by about a 200-mile stretch of the Susquehanna River. Before I was old enough to play organized baseball, it was all about wiffle ball. Even after I was old enough to play organized, we still ruined people's yards with wiffle ball games. There was no travel ball, there was no fall ball. In fact, at eight years old, I barely made it to my first organized team practice. I rode my bike the four or five blocks to the field at the elementary school. I was so excited to go, I arrived so early that there was no one else there. I did not even get off my bike. I just turned around and rode back home. And as I pulled into our yard, my mom looked at me and asked the obvious question, what are you doing here? And my response was, obviously, there isn't anybody there. Well, get back on your bike and go back to the field. Well, luckily I did. And my baseball career got better once I made it back to that first practice. The little league years were great. Just playing ball, no stress. It was all about pizza and snow cones and the packs of baseball cards with that stale piece of gum inside. During those Little League years, I saw my first big league game ever. It was in the late 1970s at Yankee Stadium. And our family seats were in the mezzanine behind the right field foul pole. At some point later in the game, my brother Mark and I got tired of just sitting there, so we went on an adventure. And that took two kids from small town America to the back row of the right field upper deck at Yankee Stadium with no adult supervision. The players look awfully small from way up there. And that was my first taste of the major leagues. Now high school ball, that wasn't quite as stress-free, but my coaches Carter Giles and Fred Springman, who are here, gave me the opportunity to pitch and play shortstop for four years. I want to thank them for trusting me at a young age and allowing me to grow as a player. And we even got a state championship in there. Thank you guys again. When high school was winding down, it was time to decide whether college was my next challenge or whether pro ball was. And I'd had the opportunity to play for an 18 and under national team one summer during high school, and that's where I met Coach Dean Stotts from Stanford University. We sat down after a game for an hour or so, and needless to say, he did not leave a great first impression with me. And he knows this, I've told him many times. Fortunately for me, I did not stick with my first impression. So even though I was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles after high school, at 18 years old, I left Pennsylvania for the land of palm trees and earthquakes, Central California, and Stanford University. Head coach Mark Marquis, pitching coach Tom Dutton, 
and Coach Dean Stotts are all here. I thank you guys for coming all the way from California. They talk. Thank you. They taught me more about baseball than I ever imagined. They also had the confidence in me to put me in the rotation for my entire freshman year. And somehow we won the national championship. I love my years at Stanford. I met so many great people, and these coaches are still my close friends 30 years later. Thank you again, guys. After spending three years at Stanford, I was once again drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. Most of their minor league affiliates were near Pennsylvania, so I was looking forward to heading back east to play. And as it turned out, my minor league debut was in Williamsport. Just 14 months after they drafted me, the Earls took a shot, and I was called up to Baltimore with about two months left in the 1991 season. My first start was at Comiskey Park in Chicago, and I actually threw really well that day. I only gave up four hits. Problem was, Frank Thomas had three of them, including a solo home run, and we lost one nothing. And that was my introduction to the big leagues. The next season was my first full year in the majors, and the first year for Camden Yards in downtown Baltimore. It was sold out every game, and we had a pretty solid season. I was able to win 18 games to make my first All-Star team. I want to thank the Orioles organization for giving me the opportunity to pitch and prove that I could succeed at the Major League level. To the Orioles executives who brought baseball back to Baltimore's Inner Harbor, it remains one of the best ballpark environments in the game. To the Orioles fans, to the Orioles fans who came out every game 48,000 strong to support us and to support me. Thank you. I have some great baseball memories from those years, and I loved pitching in orange and black. For the longest time while I was in Baltimore, I told myself that I'd never play in New York. I'm a small town guy, and that place was just too much for me. Well, obviously, I changed my mind, mostly because Joe Torre called me two or three days after they won the 2000 World Series over the Mets, and Joe simply said, I just wanted you to know that we were interested in you coming to New York to pitch for us. Well, this first impression was a big one, so after 10 years in Baltimore, I was off to New York City. I want to thank the Steinbrenner family. I want to thank the Steinbrenner family, General Manager Brian Cashman, and the entire New York Yankees organization for making my transition painless and making me feel like I had been there forever. To all the Yankee fans everywhere, Thank you for your support during my eight years in pinstripes. We made, we made seven playoff appearances and two trips to the World Series, although we couldn't quite win one while I was there. I have tons of great stories from those years. The Subway Series matchups with the Mets, the Red Sox rivalry, historic playoff games, including my first ever relief appearance in Game 7 of the 03 ALCS, and of course, my one and only 20-win season in my final year. But because I was an American League pitcher, I needed help, lots of help every game if I wanted to be successful. I could pitch great and still lose. I could throw below average and still win. I needed guys to get hits, to make plays on defense, and quite often get the last few outs for me when I could not finish the game. I did, however, get nine hits in the big leagues, including my first one off of John Smoltz. And since he's sitting behind me, I'm kind of proud of that. But of course, I'm not up here because of my hitting ability. I need to thank everyone who was on this journey with me. You're all pieces of a giant puzzle, and whether your contribution was large or small, the final product would not be complete without you. From my childhood friends to all the friends I met along the way, to all the guys who worked out with me in the cold weather during the off seasons in Pennsylvania, to my agents, Arntel and Joe Wolf and all their staff, to the athletic trainers in Baltimore and New York who kept me on the field and got me through 18 seasons with no surgeries, to all my coaches from Little League through high school, the minors and the majors, who all gave me information to use, ideas to try, and leadership to learn from, and to each and every one of my teammates with the Orioles and the Yankees. You were all a part of this. Your base hit, or the double play you turned, or the strikeout you got in relief with the bases loaded in the eighth, you all contributed to this moment for me. I thank you for all your support. And that includes a few of my fellow inductees today. Harold Baines got more than a few hits for me in our seasons together in Baltimore. And Lee and Mariano saved tons of games for me over the years. I want to congratulate them, along with Edgar and the Halliday family, on this great honor today.
It is definitely not easy to be the family of a professional baseball player or any family who has someone who is not able to be home all the time. That's one of the toughest parts of this game. To my wife, Jana, who raised our three children by herself most of the time for most of those years, thank you for being this family's foundation. I love you, honey. To our children, Kira, Bryson, and Peyton, I'm sorry I wasn't always around during those years, but these last 11 years have been great, and I never once regretted retiring when I did. As you can see, things worked out nicely. I love you guys. I can't be more grateful for my family, for their love and patience and understanding to allow me to do this for 18 years. Thank you to my mom for convincing me to get back on my bike and go back to that first practice, for washing my stuff, for making me lunch, and for finally allowing me to stop taking piano lessons because it just wasn't working out. Thanks to my dad for always being there, for playing catch and throwing me batting practice, even after a full day at the office, for coaching some of my Little League teams, for your words of advice, even when I didn't agree with them, and for you and mom always being in my games, for football, basketball, and baseball, all the way through high school. To my one and only sibling, my brother Mark, for watching and charting and sometimes recording many of my games, for being supportive and obsessively superstitious, to the level that no one could leave their seats in his row at the stadium for any reason whatsoever if I was throwing well. And for all those wiffle ball games when we were kids, thanks for everything. Maybe all that superstition helped me out here. Since I received the incredible and surprising news of my election to the Hall of Fame back in January, I spent a lot of time reflecting on my journey to Cooperstown. How did a kid from a small town in rural PA play enough wiffle ball to make it to the major leagues and pitch there for 18 years. I was never fortunate enough to win a Cy Young Award or be a World Series champion. I didn't win 300 games or strike out 3,000 batters. And while my opportunities for those achievements are in the past, today I get to become a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Maybe I was saving up from all of those almost achievements for one last push, and this time I made it. Thank you to baseball for an awesome ride. To all the fans for supporting this great game, and to all of you for being here with me today, thank you.